In this example, we are given several functions and asked to determine function values. In the first example, we are given f of x equals 3x squared minus x and asked to determine the function value f of negative four. Because the input is negative four, to determine this function value, we substitute negative four for x. So given the function rule f of x equals three x squared minus x, to determine f of negative four, again we substitute negative four for x, which gives us three times the square of negative four minus negative four. And now we simplify the right side following the order of operations. The square of negative four is equal to negative four times negative four, which is positive 16, giving us three times 16. And then minus negative four is equivalent to plus positive four. Then multiplying three times 16 is 48. 48 plus four is equal to 52. We now know f of negative four equals 52. Next we are given t of n equals the absolute value of n minus two. We're asked to determine the function value t of negative five. So given the function rule t of n equals the absolute value of n minus two, to determine t of negative five, we substitute negative five for n, and therefore t of negative five equals the absolute value of negative five minus two. The absolute value of negative five is positive five because negative five is five units from zero, giving us five minus two, and five minus two is equal to three. Next we are given the function rule d of r equals the cube of two r, and we're asked to determine the function value d of negative three. So given d of r equals the cube of two r, to determine d of negative three, we substitute negative three for r, which will give us the cube of two times negative three. Two times negative three is negative six, which gives us the cube of negative six. The cube of negative six is equal to negative six times negative six times negative six, which equals negative 216. D of negative three equals negative 216. The next function rule is g of x equals two divided by three x. We are asked to determine g of negative six, and therefore we substitute negative six for x. So g of negative six equals two divided by three times negative six. Well, three times negative six is negative 18. This simplifies to two over or two divided by negative 18. Because a positive divided by a negative is negative, we can rewrite this as negative two eighteenths. But notice how this does simplify because two and 18 share a common factor of two. We divide the numerator and denominator by two to simplify the fraction. This gives us negative one ninth. So now we know g of negative six equals negative one ninth. The next function rule is k of x equals two raised to the power of x. We are asked to determine k of three. To determine k of three, we substitute three for x. K of three equals two raised to the third power, which is equal to two times two times two, which is equal to eight. K of three equals eight. And finally, we have p of n equals one divided by n squared. We are asked to determine p of negative six. So p of n equals one divided by n squared. p of negative six is equal to one divided by the square of negative six. The square of negative six is equal to negative six times negative six, which equals positive 36, which gives us the fraction one thirty-sixth. P of negative six equals one thirty-sixth. I hope you found this helpful.